Hey guys, it's Everyman Dan and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to make some etched cups using a Cricut for stencil and a sandblaster. So I went online and I found this design and I thought it was kind of funny because I pick on my wife a lot about being late or running behind and that's what I'm going to use for my stencil in this video. Everywhere you see in white there is going to be the cup showing through so when I etch it everywhere the cups exposed will get the etch onto it. Um, I grab a piece of transfer tape which is just a clear tape that you use to keep all the little pieces of vinyl in place when you're moving it onto your surface and you don't have to worry too much about bubbles in this um, you're not leaving the sticker on you just want to make sure you don't have any wrinkles or bubbles right at the edge of where we're going to be etching because the sand or the sand blasting material that we're using if it can get into those little wrinkles or cracks it might etch and leave kind of a fuzzy jagged line of where our design is. Alright, after it's stuck onto the cup, I take the transfer tape off. I've got one little wrinkle on this W. I work it out. I don't think it's going to be big enough to be a problem. I'm going to take blue painter's tape and cover everywhere else on the cup that I don't want exposed so it won't have a chance of getting etched. Um, I've got it all set up as you can see. I've put it in my sandblasting cabinet. The material I'm using to blast with is actually a crushed glass. It's very fine. It's not going to be abrasive enough to tear up the vinyl stencil, but still enough to make a quick etch of the stainless steel cup. If I were using a powder coated cup and wanting to blast off the paint itself, I'd have to spend a lot of time doing it and being careful and and sometimes I'll double up the vinyl, makes it a little bit thicker and resistant to tearing up. Uh, because this is just a plain stainless steel cup, I only have to go over it a little bit. A couple passes in the sandblaster does it. I'm just wanting to take that shine off and everywhere that I have my design exposed will be a matte finish and you'll see that later on. After I feel like I've gotten a good etch, I'll open up the cabinet to take a closer look. Looking through that glass with all the dust gets a little hard, so I do this to make sure that I've got clean edges on all the spaces, and if I need to put it back in there, I can just to hit those problem spots. On this one, I got a pretty good cover on the first pass, so the next step will be to take it inside and take the vinyl off. Alright, I'm back inside and I'm going to take my vinyl stencil off. In this one, the vinyl was being stubborn and was coming off in little tiny bits. So I did a lot of this off camera and I'll show you just the finished product so you don't have to sit here and see me struggle with this vinyl. Okay, I've gotten all the stubborn vinyl off and here's my etch. It turned out really well, I've got clean lines. This isn't gonna rub off or wash off. It's gonna be on there forever. You can use it on powder coated cups or painted cups and it's gonna stand out a lot more. The only difference is during the stencil stage, you're gonna have two layers of vinyl when you cut it out versus one. Thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, hit the like button. And if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a video using almost the exact same process, but with gunpowder and burning it into wood. Uh, it's going to be really fun and it shouldn't be uh, too hard to do. So uh, be sure to check back in for that. Like I said, subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever that comes out. But until then, thanks for stopping by.